Welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to sharing strategies and tools to help you make your dream life possible. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women grow their businesses and get what they want without feeling guilty, overwhelmed, or confused. If you're tired of your ideas spinning around your mind and you really want something more for yourself, you're in the right place. Learn how to create the space to make your ideas a reality. I promise if I can do this, anyone can. Let's go. Hey there, welcome to the Idea Space Podcast. My name is Jen Liddy, and I want to let you in on a secret. Normally, I plan all of my podcast and marketing a month in advance. It's a way that I teach my students to get their content done in advance. And sometimes you have to switch gears when something happens to you or you feel like the tone needs to shift based on something that's happening in the world. And given what's going on right now with the COVID-19 virus and all of the outcomes and effects that it's having on people all over the place, I just needed to switch things up. And so today I wanted to talk about what to do for your business and for yourself when you're in the middle of a panic, like we are seeing, and maybe you're not panicking, but maybe people around you are. So today I wanted to share with you 10 things you can do for your business that don't feel yucky or sleazy or icky during this time. But before I get into that, I really want to let you know that I have been struggling with knowing how to feel, knowing what's right to do. Because on one day, I feel like, oh, I'm feeling too much. I, I, I feel so much anxiety. I feel so much sadness. And then on another day, I felt, you know, this is ridiculous. Are people overreacting? But the swinging back and forth let me understand that There's no one right way to feel. Really, you get to feel however you want. And if you happen to be surrounded by people who are telling you that it's not okay that you feel what you feel or you're consuming a lot of information, it might really have you doubting yourself. Because so many of the people I work with, one of their bottom line issues for themselves is that they don't really know what to trust when it comes to their own feelings. And so if you're surrounded by people who are telling you you're acting crazy or you're not, you're not caring enough or you're caring too much, you know, what I want you to do is kind of go inside. So before I get into the 10 things to do to help your business this week, I'd really like to encourage you to do some things for your own mind and soul because it really is managing our mind that will help us go inward and know how to trust ourselves. So I just wanted to remind you of important things like meditation, any kind of meditation, healing meditations, forgiveness meditations, guided meditations. Even if you can meditate for two to three minutes a day, it really shifts your energy and how you go through the world in a much more grounded way. Additionally, I have found tapping or EFT. If you've never heard of tapping before, it's a technique to where where you're talking and you're tapping on certain energy points uh, on your body at the same time. I am by no means an expert on this, but if you Google tapping or if you go to YouTube and you search for tapping or EFT, you'll find obviously millions of results. Don't spend too much time searching through them because that's a waste of time. Click on one and just start reaping the benefits of tapping and watch how it can just bring you back to center and help you breathe again. Another thing I have found to be really helpful is just saying what I'm feeling aloud, finding a few trusted people in your life who you can say what you're feeling to and talk it out. And if that's not an option for you, and if you're like highly, highly internal cerebral and journaling is an option for you, it's another great way to just get the things out of your head. Because when it's so soupy up in your head, it's very hard to trust your feelings and to know what to do next. Again, if you're social distancing, which I am trying to figure that out for my family, um, getting outside in nature is not a problem. You can still do that. Get out in nature. And if that just means going out to a sit spot where you enjoy what's going on around you and you just sit and meditate and notice what's going on around you, or you take a walk and you are in movement, or you go for a bike ride, depending on where you are, movement in nature is very important. And if you can incorporate movement into your daily life, and that could be 
you know, going online and just Googling a yoga class or a Pilates class or something that you love to do where you can keep doing that at home. It's very good for you to help you stay grounded. Rest is, of course, important and connection with self and others, even though we're socially isolated, we still have texts, we still have Zoom, right? Like we can still have virtual coffees and virtual teas. So beyond those things, what I've been doing is a, is trying to really stay off social media because I found that it's just an easy way to consume a lot of information, but it doesn't necessarily move me forward or soothe me. And then of course, for me a news cleanse, because I live with a news junkie, so I get all the news that I need from him. The other thing you may be struggling with right now is how to, to how to deal with your business because is this the right time to be talking about your business? Are you feeling afraid that business is slowing down? And I know that it is a time that you can be talking about your business and it does not have to feel sleazy or yucky or icky. And I guarantee that you have seen someplace someone taking advantage of or preying on people with you know, this fear and this panic that's going on. So I have 10 ideas for you that you can work on your business. Even if you feel like you, things are slowing down for you, you can still work on your business and none of these things feel icky or yucky. Now, all of the things I just talked about for your mind and soul, that's a very, the very first place to begin because it's really hard to put any of these into practice. If you're feeling not grounded, if you're feeling um, that you are all over the place and that your emotions all over the place. So really first take care of your mind and your soul, and then let's go look at your business. So here are the 10 things that you can do to keep growing your business and sustain your business without feeling sleazy or yucky. And I want you to really put your creative hat on now because I'm going to give you some ideas, but given your particular business, I want you to ask yourself good questions. How could I potentially do that for my business? Number 10, create a service to provide online. What can you do that you can take online? This might be, you know, if you're a yoga teacher, it's very easy to take your yoga class online. Meditation, coaching, consultations, education or training, summits and conferences, those can all really easily go online. And so I want you to really get creative and ask yourself, what aspect of my business can I transfer to the interwebs and be of service there for now. And maybe again, this doesn't come to you easily, but brainstorm with somebody because I promise you there's so many ways that we can take an aspect of our business and grow it online. Number nine, developing done for you content. Now this is stuff that people don't want to do themselves and you do it for them. For example, maybe this is a great time to sell an at-home fitness plan for somebody or a specialized nutrition plan. Like maybe people can't come into their Weight Watchers a studio, or maybe they can't get to the gym, but you can provide for them at home things to do so that they can stay on their targets, right? Um, you could even develop social media plans for people. Done for you social media plans is something that you could literally sell as a done for you product or an entire visual branding suite. You could just create somebody's visual branding over the internet. I know that you have a magical talent that somebody would love for you to do for them. They've just been never able to really think about it before. Maybe they haven't wanted to invest in it before. Now's a great time to try and make that a reality. Number eight, Determine what can be delivered. Now this, I mean, either delivered online via email or delivered to somebody's home, right? And left on a porch. Obviously restaurants, groceries, and pharmacies. But my husband was saying, I bet there's going to be a lot of um, home people doing things around their home, right? Like uh, improvements, home improvements. That's the word I was looking for. And how many how many home delivery are we able to get from the from like Home Depot or or uh, Lowe's? Are there local hardware stores that could deliver to us? Additionally, florists. How great would it be to get flowers right now? And so maybe this is something you could even do to send somebody flowers or to receive flowers because it's really vital if you are a brick and mortar to remain in your audience's line of vision. Even if you are an online service or a product, let your people know that you can still provide for them in this time, even if it's a little more inconvenient for you. So that's the top 10, nine, and eight are all things to take online, develop done for you content and determine what can be delivered. Moving into number seven is a more personal thing for yourself. And I'm going to say that number seven is to finish that course. 
I bet you've got like seven to 10 unfinished courses living on your computer. And now is the time to do them because you're going to have more time. Consider this working on your business. This is time well spent, right? It's time to do that Instagram class or learn Facebook ads or to finally finish Marie Forleo's B school. Whatever it is you paid for it, get off social media, stop watching the news and fill your brain with something that'll help you grow your business when all of this is over. Now, number six is my favorite because this is my jam and it's creating content for the future. And now I want to say, this is a great thing. I could actually provide somebody in a done for you way, like provide them with all the content for the next three months of social media, for example, because you know, you should have been emailing your list all this time, or you should be more regular with your podcast or your social media posts, but putting out consistent messaging is really hard. Imagine if you had the time right now to really start writing the pieces that your audience needs to hear in the future, creating future content. Imagine for like what your audience will need to hear three months from now. How can you help them solve their problem? Do it now and save it for later. That's that's my favorite. Number five is putting your photos out into the world. I bet on your phone, you've got like 6,275 photos living there. And some of those photos are great con- great visuals to accompany the content that you're going to create or are creating right now. Also, some of those photos are wonderful inspirations for stories to tell your audience. And of course, many of those photos should just be deleted. Go ahead, right in there and do that. So you've got some time right now, right? Free yourself up and start sharing your face with your audience because you'll be shocked at how happy your audience is to see your face, especially during a time like this. Number four is organize your electronic files. One of my clients, uh, Catherine Avery, Productivity by Design, and you should check her out. She's all about creating a space in your office and in your, your life to be more productive. And she has taught me how much more money uh, businesses make when they are productive and organized. So does your desktop, your physical desktop, look like mm, a high schooler's bedroom? And what does your virtual desktop look like? Because I know that by the end of the week, my virtual desktop is filled with screenshots and just nonsense. Do you have files that are misnamed or hard to find? Do you have like not a good way to search for the things that you're looking for? I know that you know that this is messing with your business and this is your moment because an organized, systematized business will make you more money and lose less time. So on the other side of this coronavirus experience, you're going to feel like the biggest badass if you go and do these three things, six, five, and four, create content for the future, put your photos out into the world and organize your electronic files. Now three, two, and one are much more for the soul. Number three is to go for a walk and listen to that book that you've been wanting to listen to, that podcast that you haven't caught up on. Take your dog or your kid or yourself for a walk out in nature or even on the treadmill and listen to the book that everyone's been talking about, right? It will stir up so much excitement in your brain. It'll stir stir up so much creativity in your brain and it'll get you out of this stuck place. It'll help you work on your business. Now, some of my favorites to suggest right now for you is Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. That's a great one if you're struggling with your messaging and you feel like your website isn't very clear. Why We Can't Sleep by Ada Calhoun. This is a great one if you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, and you're just finding you're feeling a little fried, a little uh, over it all, and you don't know what to do about it. Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert for those creatives out there who feel alone and like nobody understands them. And then How to Get Shit Done by Erin Falconer. This book has such a misleading title because it's such a it's such a battle cry for women to really do less and get more for themselves. So those are the four books that I would recommend. Building a Story Brand, Why We Can't Sleep, Big Magic, and How to Get Shit Done. Number two is Declutter. Now, I know why is a business coach talking about decluttering? Because every single time I have a client who is really in her own way, I will usually give her, well, I will always give her this this task to do, declutter. Choose a, a, a cabinet, a drawer, a closet, just declutter 
because it really frees up things in such an amazing, impactful way that you, you nobody sees the outcome coming. It increases productivity and gets your mind focused on a task and then you cross that task off the list and then you're open to so much more. So if you stop rereading the garbage on the internet, if you get rid of the stuff in your closets and drawers and basements and bookshelves, I promise you your life will change. Set a timer. This is not an all day event. Set a timer for 15 minutes or 20 minutes and please get rid of the stuff. Do not hold on to it for a garage sale. Just give it away. The $75 you might make is not worth it, I promise, to change your world to have less stuff because fewer things equals more abundance. And I know it sounds weird, but give it a try. Let me know. And number one, this is the one really for your soul. Be of service. You are a leader and it may be hard for you to see yourself that, that way, but your business is leading somebody. Even if you don't have a business and you're listening to this podcast, you are a leader of some group. Maybe it's your family, maybe it's your book club, maybe it's your, you know, the people in your in your department. But your business does not have to tank along with your mindset. If you can be of service and be a service-based leader, keeping yourself productive, forward focused and creative, I promise you, you will generate so much goodwill that people will want to hear what you have to say and your business can keep moving forward. With your creativity and inspiration, you can grow and sustain your business during this time. And you can be a leader who collaborates and moves ahead without the sleaze factor. In service, remind your clients, your audience, your staff, you know, all the people, remind them that you're there for them. Please keep your messaging going during this time. Be of service. Your messaging is going to be helpful to people. So if you have something to add to this list, I would love to hear from you. You can email me at jen underscore liddy at me.com. That's me.com. And I'd really love to hear how these ideas helped you keep working on your business and growing it. You don't have to feel sleazy. And if you are really stuck with how to do some of these things, especially around creating content, creating helpful messaging, creating a good vibe where you really feel like you're putting good content out into the world, then you're going to want to join us for the customized content solution workshop. It's a two day workshop and you're going to walk away with an entire bank so that literally everything I'm talking about here feel so much easier. It's just one less thing you have to deal with, one less thing you have to do. Imagine basically you have an ATM of content that you can withdraw, withdraw from any time during the year that you need it. And we're going to do that in two days in a virtual workshop. So we're social distancing. We don't need to be in the same room to do it. And it's pretty powerful stuff. So I'd love to see you there. If you go to Jen liddy.com forward slash solution. You'll find out all the information there. We start on March 23rd. But in the meantime, please take care of yourself with your mindset and your soul. And please take care of your business by taking care of your people. Thanks for listening. And I will see you next week with some more helpful content. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the idea space in your podcast app. And tell that friend of yours who needs some help getting where she wants to go. I'd be so appreciative if you left a review because then we can help more women create the space for their ideas too. Go to jenliddy.com forward slash free to grab the many free resources there to help you move forward. And I will see you next time. Bye.